forward. Hey everybody, uh, next guest with me is Michael Giorizzo. Now Michael is, really doesn't need much of an introduction. He's kind of an industry icon. Um, you see him on YouTube, you see him all over the place, uh, doing amazing things and offering uh, wonderful advice. So I thought, what a great guy to have join us. Uh, we're in uncertain times, aren't we? This is, this is kind of crazy right now. So from the, from the shop perspective, what are you guys in the, in the first onset of the coronavirus, what are you seeing on the ground with your stores, your shops right now, Michael? Yeah, so, you know, the first thing that we've tried to do is just calm everyone and um, take the, the uh, I think, what are becoming some pretty normal precautions, the disinfecting of every touch point on the vehicle, disinfecting keys, putting our people in protective gloves, um, disinfecting the whole work in, environment from uh, desks to workstations, you know, anything that we touch, even tools, um, you know, on, on a daily basis or multi -time, multiple times on, uh, a day for us. But we've also done some interesting things, I think, that uh, may be game changers for us in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, about maybe a year and a half ago, we tried to launch a uh, electronic claim package, which was basically a portal that had all the information from the, from the folder uh, in it that an insurer could see. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it had limited traction. You know, some of the major insurers thought it was almost like invading. Uh, but now we've just taken the position that that's how we're going to settle claims. Um, we respectfully asked all the insurers not to send their folks out, yeah. um, that will give them everything that they need from photos to videos, uh, to manufacturers, work instructions, position statements, our repair plan, invoices, everything that they need inside of that portal. And it's actually, it's actually been well received. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been, uh, we've actually been thanked by a lot of insurers to take, for taking that responsible approach. Um, and, and that just from the standpoint of our, what we call our repair planners, uh, the, the, uh, the estimators, if you will, uh, are, are, I feel a, a calm around them because they were concerned about having to have that interaction, especially after a field appraiser has been to three or four other places. Right. So uh, that, that, that has helped. Um, we've, uh, we put in place uh, starting today, actually, where we're doing box lunches for all of our people, uh, so they don't have to go out and try and find source lunch someplace. Oh wow! Uh, that they can take the they can take their box lunch. They can go eat in their car. We're we're um, you know requesting respectfully requesting them that you know, they don't have gatherings for lunch. That you know that they uh, they you know they grab their box lunch and go to a quiet place and enjoy their lunch and then we come back to work. Um, it's kind of sidebar bonus. We support the local economies doing that as well because certainly the restaurant business is hurting uh, at this point. We we've always offered offered pickup and delivery, so um, we've really just made more of awareness uh, about that. But also, um, you know, key drops outside the uh, 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 the office, uh, after hours drop offs, uh, rental delivery. Uh, really making a point in front of the uh, the customers of showing them the precautions that we're taking with their vehicle, disinfecting in front of them, putting steel wheel, steering wheel covers on, mm. seat covers, you know, just, and, and what's really, really cool is that our people just are so engaged now in coming up with more solutions, more ways to calm people, more ways to, to deal with it and keep our people and our customers safe. And, you know, that, that's the most important thing to us. That's interesting. One of the things that we, we were talking about in an earlier segment is often staff will look to leadership at this time. And if leadership seems to have a control or, or a calm about them, um, it, it kind of just travels downstream to the rest of the staff where they feel like, okay, you know what, if, if Michael's calm and collected and controlled at this time, um, I feel more secure in what I'm doing. What, are you, what steps are you taking to, to help your staff feel like we're going to weather this storm and this is something that is a blip on the radar, we've got this. What, what are you doing to assure your staff? Yeah, just a, a lot of communication, whether it be verbal communication. We have multiple locations, so I can't obviously be in front of everyone. Uh, so using uh, email, just uh, making phone calls, uh, personal uh, phone calls, text, everything and anything we can do to get the message out that, hey, you know, we are going to weather through this. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. These are, as you mentioned before, uncharted waters. Yeah. We, we haven't seen anything like this, at least in my lifetime. Right. And, um, but we're going to get through it. You know, we're going to get through it. And you could say, well, maybe people are, are panicking unnecessarily or uh, some of the measures are too extreme. But what's too extreme? If, 
if it contains the spread, then yeah. it was the right measure. If the spread is greater than we've anticipated, it's still the right measure. Yeah. So as much, you know, it, 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 is it is painful in, in certain situations it's the, it's the right thing to do but just calming our people just have a lot of communication you know keeping your poise uh, especially in front of them that can freak out all, uh, all all night long but i get back in front of our people and and, and uh, certainly we have to be the one that really resonates the calm um you know I, i'm a solution seeker yeah. to a fault if that's possible i'm, yeah. I'm always looking for uh, a better way, you know, and right. um, somebody saying you can't is, you know, that, that, that's, that's just beating you, right? You're that like, just feels us. <laughs> that feels us. And consequently, that's kind of been, uh, that's kind of been instilled uh, into our team. Our job is to figure it out. Yeah. And so we pulled a couple of emergency meetings with our leadership team, our support team uh, together, uh, just expressing that and then that we're going to get everybody involved. So as we come up with these things to, uh, to do and to keep our, you know, ways to keep our people safe and, and calm, we've encouraged others, you know, give us, give us your input. Uh, let us know what you think. And we and there's been some great ideas. The yeah. yesterday's call, um, when we made the decision that we were gonna settle all claims electronically, that we were not gonna have people come on the property anymore, um, got pretty exciting because part of our vision has been that this is a this is a way we should be doing business anyways. Right. And if we can provide all the information so complete, so confident, uh, so comprehensive, that why do we have to have this uh, middle cost and uh, distraction really? And it really doesn't do anything other than po you know, possibly delay the vehicle from being repaired um, and. Uh, and just create unnecessary friction. So we're really hoping that there's an opportunity that, that comes out of this where we can build that confidence and the insurers that we deal with, because we don't have DRPs, but we can build that confidence almost like in a reverse DRP situation. Sure. We're providing so much information to them, uh, all the information that they need to be comfortable and confident of uh, settling the claim. You know, so just even you can think beyond the dots of really what can ultimately come out of it um, where, I don't know, live video feeds and repair planning and just anything that you yeah. can really think of uh, to ultimately do this settle claims without having that, you know, that personal interaction, that unnecessary interaction or distraction. You know, to your point, I think we could experience a, a short term pain, but there could be a lot of long term benefit that comes out of it if we position and use this time wisely. And it sounds like that's exactly what you're, you're prepping for and you're preparing for. So I think that's, that's super shrewd. Um, what are you feeling from the customer's perspective right now? What do you anticipate? Um, I, I'm talking workflow. One of the things that, you know, one of the economists we were talking with earlier uh, was saying that, you know, they expect fewer vehicles on the road because people are trapped in their homes. So obviously fewer vehicles on the road equates to fewer accidents. Um, you know, they have, one of the economists was saying it, it's a cabin fever effect where they expect people to be indoors for 15 days. They're going to go crazy. They're going to get out in their vehicles and start driving around again. So, you know, um, how, how are you current, what are you currently seeing in your marketplace and what are you anticipating um, for, for claims volumes, for repair volume? And what are you doing to, uh, you know, kind of offset a, a potential drop in repair volume? So, um, you know, a couple things. Fortunately, our stores have been very busy, uh, and they have been. And, you know, we've had somewhat of an uncomfortable backlog for some time. Yeah. So, obviously, in these times, that comes in pretty handy. We're sure. pulling a lot of customers forward uh, in, in that, um, that level of communication with the customer. We're able to then talk to them about that pickup and delivery and how that will go uh, on the drop-off. So that if they've been feeling any apprehension, we, we can settle that now. Um, we're really heightening up our, you know, call it up sales or walk around in the vehicle and looking for other opportunities yeah. uh, to create more sales out of that vehicle. You know, work the customers need done. Uh, that sometimes in the, the, the heat of the moment when we're really busy, we miss it. You know, uh, you know, we try not to, but we miss it. And, and running, you know, you know, running some, uh, some, great deals on some of that stuff all is you know some tag-along work that yep. type of thing 
uh, getting the message out you know, to our the customer base of pickup and delivery and that we could do this without you know, any real uh, direct uh, contact, making them comfortable around that. But uh, we, we have definitely seen a slowdown uh, in door traffic. And so we're going we're gonna to have to prepare uh, for that. You know, we're not a company that, um, you know, rides the, the hills and, and valleys and lays off or anything like that. So we're, we're going to work hard to weather through it um, so that nobody loses their, not only employment, but their opportunity. Because our company is about opportunity and about growth. And we also have uh, a number of growth opportunities with our dealer-based model. So we have, you know, potential to really spread out and, and um, uh, take some of our people and put them at other locations, uh, locations that may need help uh, along the way or may need additional skills. Uh, but, you know, again, we're uncharted water. So, you know, how, you know, this definitely is not something that's going to change overnight because behaviors are tough to change. And now we've become, you know, the society that's very, you know, skeptical, scared, uh, apprehensive. Uh, I think some behaviors never change. I think it changes the way that we do business in a, a number of different ways forever and for the better, you know, uh, but um, this is going to be interesting. And, you know, I, what I, I just can't say enough about our team because the mindset of our team is whatever comes at us, we are going to deal with and figure out. And uh, I think I mentioned to you last time we were together, sometimes I, I realized the best thing I could do is just stay out of their way. Right? <laughs> Where was it? That was at the BMW conference. Yes, it was. It was. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's, you know, that's, that's some good advice uh, right there. What do, what do you think the long-term ramifications? I'm talking, you know, three to three, six, nine months from now. Um, we don't really know how long, it, whether this is a, you know, a quick little snowstorm or an entire winter season that we're facing ahead here. But, um, you know, and, and I know we're asking you to look in a crystal ball. Um, but what do you think some of the, the opportunities, some of the ramifications, um, and, and what can shops do to, to weather the storm, in your opinion, for the long haul? Well, I mean, we're, we're a big fan of the social media marketing and getting our message out there and, you know, getting the message, whether it be the, the mess, simple message about what we're doing to keep our people and our customers uh, in uh, good health and safe and, and, and safe when they're dealing with us. Um, but I think just that, that customer connectivity is going to be super important. Uh, and the message of providing services where, you know, they can, they can do business with us in a very different way without that interaction. Literally they can do business with us without ever, ever having face yeah. uh, contact. So basically uh, if, they, if they want to, yeah, yeah. if they want to, but, um, you know, it, it's unknown out there. So there's, there's going to be, um, you know, some challenges out in front of us from uh, a workload standpoint. Unfortunately, you know, with that claim count that obviously going to go down, uh, some of the shops will be squeezed and to the point of not being able to survive. Now you have to hope that those are the shops that really shouldn't be there anyways. Right. Uh, I hate to say that because we do have some operators, but we've got a lot of great operators that we're all praying for. Yeah. The weather through this and uh, not only survive but you know thrive thrive again so one of the things that has been raised by many shops in different parts of the globe is the economical concerns the customer is going to have so their job may be laid off or or what have you i think the body shop one of the nice things i like is we're somewhat recession proof with the fact that the insurance company pays a lot of the bills they have a deductible they're responsible for. Is there anything in your organization that, that you're trying to do to help people with their economic concerns or um, it, what are you doing around that piece of it, I guess? Yeah, so we're looking at a couple of different programs for financing al along the way. We have one of our stores in Western New York where our dealer partners gotten into that even for uh, service work where yeah. they're able to get on the spot financing, I think a five minute approval, that type of thing. We're, we're, we're looking at, we're looking at that. Um, you know, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, looking at the vehicle and, you know, is there something that could be an appearance allowance and credit towards a, a deductible insurance company get documented so they don't have, you know, they, they make sure that it's not uh, claimed on another loss, but, you know, maybe it's a, you know, something that's just a scuff or a scuff in a headlight, that type of thing. So we'll look for opportunities uh, when those are a concern uh, for them. But that's a tough one, you know, because you don't know what the concerns are to you have the vehicle and um 
you know, in a lot of cases, people are making that decision whether to bring the vehicle in based on can I afford that deductible yeah. or not. Yeah, I think anything that can be done to alleviate those concerns. You know, what about part shortages, um, you know, paint supplies? We, we have some people like 3M is going to be on, on with us. We've got uh, actually today George Irving from Toyota is going to be on, um, you know, talking about the supply chain. Have you guys seen any interruption? Are you expecting any, you know, parts delays or anything like that? What have you been hearing from? And I know it's early, but what have you been hearing out there on the street? Yeah. Other than uh, trying to find toilet paper and uh, disinfecting <laughs> wipes, we haven't seen anything quite yet. Uh, yeah. I did have um, uh, some conversations with our supply chain from a paint material standpoint. They don't foresee any interruption uh, as far, which is great. And, and this obviously can change daily. Sure. Um, we, um, I heard some uh, that there may be some disrupt, disruption with alternative parts, uh, right. but we don't use them. So we're, we're OE, but you know, even that could be interrupted uh, down the line, but we haven't heard anything there yet. Uh, so, you know, we're just taking it day by day. I, uh, I'm hoping that, that we don't see that, but that's a real probability. We've talked about it, that su supply chain interruption could, could affect us. Um, we're just taking it uh, day by day. Yeah, no, I think that's wonderful. We have, and, you know, just keeping communication and checking on it, but right now we haven't heard of any, yeah. any uh, disruption yeah. to it. Well, that's fabulous. Well, as a, as a kind of wrap up, is there any final parting thoughts, pieces of advice that you could share with the community? Uh, we're going to have shops, OEMs, insurers watching all this stuff. So um, what can you, what can you say to our industry as a whole that might be something helpful that they can take away? Yeah, I just think that we have to think outside the box and, you know, look at it, this as an opportunity to change the way that we do business, mm -hmm. um, that uh, there's an opportunity to make this whole process better, to streamline it. Uh, from a time standpoint, streamline it from a cost standpoint, take a lot of the processing costs out of it so the vehicle can be repaired properly and still stay competitive in the whole, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, in the systemic scheme of things. Yeah. I, I, think you, uh, I think you've brought some really great insights. I learned a couple of things today that I think will be really, really helpful. So thank you for your generosity and, and sharing that with others um, as always. And uh, thanks for taking the time to visit with me. I know, I know you're a busy man. So thanks, Ryan.